Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thank you guys for being here. I hope you guys are doing well. In today's video, I'd like to talk about the woke movement in the Philippines. Now, in one of my videos titled, Is the Philippines a Traditional Country? One of our viewers left a very interesting comment. He said, I disagree with you. I don't think the Philippines is a traditional country. In fact, I think the Philippines is the most woke country in Southeast Asia. Now, I wanted to disagree with him, but I realized he made a very good point. If we're looking at that region specifically, Southeast Asia, there's about, if I'm not mistaken, about 11 countries in that region. Thailand and the Philippines definitely is on top of that list when it comes to the woke culture participation. So how do Filipinos define the word woke? I noticed that it really depends on the age group. So you have the older generation versus the young generation. And I've noticed that the younger the person is, the more liberal they get. And the older the person is, the more conservative they are. Now, the younger generation is obviously very active in social media. They're open to you know, new ideas to different cultures. And of course, they're also, they also follow trends versus the older generation of Filipinos who wants to hold on to those old ways, you know, the traditional ways of life in the Philippines. It's also good to note that the Philippines today has the largest generation of young people in its history. About 30 million of young people between the age of 10 to 24 account for 28% of the Philippines population. And then when it comes to the older generation of Filipinos, 65 years old and above, they only account for less than 6%, about 5.8%. So that generation of conservative Filipinos are dying. And, you know, of course, you have the new being replaced with the new generation of Filipinos who's much more open to new ideas, to the new way of life. Now, younger Filipinos relate the word woke to social awareness and social justice. This culture solidified after the explosion of social media with the hashtag stay woke. And I think this movement really exploded during COVID because everybody was locked down. Everybody is at home, especially the young people who's very active on social media. And they saw all kinds of things <laughs> and they started following these trends. And that's when it really exploded. Now, according to a 2023 polling by Business World, 64% of Filipinos actively engage in woke culture to amplify social issues. The study was rolled out online in May 2023, um, given to 600 Filipino participants age 18 and above using um, Agile, I can say that properly, I'm going to put it on the screen, Data Solutions Hustle PH Data Gathering App. So they use this app to get the survey. And the same study also found that 30% of Filipinos identified women's empowerment as the most critical issue to discuss online. 26% pointed to live in relationships, cohabitations, and 24% highlighted LGBTQIA plus rights and environmental protection as equally essential topics of online discourse. Now, when it comes to the top two social issues that Filipinos, younger generation of Filipinos care about, I think there's two. There's women empowerment. This is basically feminism in the country. And you have the LGBTQIA plus movement in the country. Now, if you think feminism is new to the country, it's not. Okay, it's been around. Actually, the biggest feminist group in the country, the Gabriela Women's Party, was founded in 1984. And they are very well represented in Philippine politics. They have a seat in Congress since, if I'm not mistaken, 2003. Now, you can look this up on Wikipedia. This information is available there. When I was in college, I'm going to segue a little bit. I was actually interested in joining this group because, you know, being a woman, empowered, independent, I thought I wanted to be a part of something important, something good. And I was also interested in politics. So I thought, you know, I wanted to be a part of this movement. I wanted to look into it a little bit more. And I liked their advocacy. They advocated for human rights. They advocated for, you know, protecting women against violence not just women but also children they also address social issues such as poverty globalization militarism violence rape culture women's health sex trafficking censorship and other issues affecting women and they have also provided a lot of services to women and children and so i mean who doesn't want to be a part of that until i started to look into the ideology of this group and i was actually very surprised with what i found 
I found that the first thing on their list when it comes to their ideology is national democracy. And I thought, oh, democracy sounds pretty good. And then you look into that and that's when you realize, hold on a minute, there's so much more to this group than what they say they represent. National democracy or not them is, is a political ideology and movement in the Philippines that aims to establish a people's democracy in the country with the Communist Party of the Philippines as the vanguard party. What? I was surprised when I saw this. And then you go back, you take a look at their other ideology, social socialist feminism, Marxist feminism, and progressivism. Now, when I saw that, I was like, no, I can be a part of this group. That was so sad. I was very surprised, but not not surprised. I actually talked to my dad about this when I was in college and he said, like, yeah, yeah, I'm not surprised. All right. So honestly, they have done a lot of good for the Filipino women, but the ideology is very questionable, at least for me. Okay. That's my personal opinion. Okay. Another movement that's um, a lot of younger generation of Filipinos care about is the LGBTQIA plus movement in the country. Now, when it comes to the LGBT movement in the country, you'd be surprised to know that despite the Philippines being deeply Catholic, it is actually considered as Southeast Asia's most gay friendly country. Now, in a nation of 110 million people, more than 110,000 showed up during the 2023's Quezon City's Pride Festival, making it by far the largest LGBT congregation in Southeast Asia. The country also ranks highest in the region for LGBT social acceptance, according to a 2021 global index. So, the LGBT movement is widely accepted in the country. You know, a lot of Filipinos say this. In the Philippines, you can be both openly LGBT and proudly Catholic. Now, despite the acceptance, I think majority of Filipinos hasn't really crossed that line yet. What I mean with that is, you know, here in the U.S., the West specifically, there is this idea of gender fluidity, no more gender. That's not accepted in the country yet. But... I think it's going that way, looking at the trajectory of the country. And a lot of that really happened during COVID when a lot of kids were not in school. A lot of them did this two years remote learning. So there was this one story that was actually thrust into the national spotlight. This is a story of a 11th grader transgender student in Iloilo City. And this student actually... The student was a biological male and during that remote learning you know all of the students are learning from home right when the student came back to the school um, the student started identifying as a female so the student started wearing the female uniform now when it comes to uniforms you know schools in the philippines it doesn't really matter public or private they're very strict with that you know it, if you don't wear the right socks, the color of socks or the right, you know, color of shirt, whatever, you're going to be you're going to be sent home. And so this student being a biological male student showing up in school wearing a girl's uniform or a female uniform. Of course, the student was called into the principal's office and was told that, you know, men should not wear bras because, again, the student started um, dressing as a female and the student claimed that the school security officer started policing the student's uniform meanwhile another student at the same school who also identifies as a transgender similarly reported that the school principal rounded up all the students declaring gay men with long hair must cut their long hair or they're going to be barred from school so this is where um, a lot of filipinos started debating on this you know a lot of filipinos agree that they shouldn't discriminate those who identify as the other gender. On the other hand, a lot of Filipinos also agree that, you know, the students should follow the school's policy. And the policy is if you are a biological male, then you should be wearing the, the male uniform. And then if you are a biological female, you should be wearing the female uniform. You can't just cross over or cross dress in school. So there was a lot of debate on this. And I think a lot of Filipinos um, debate on this because I don't think, I think majority of Filipinos can agree that they don't want to discriminate against anybody. But there is that line that most Filipinos don't want to cross yet. Um, I think same thing that's happening here in the U.S. because this is the reality here. If you now allow um, male, biologically male student to cross dress, you know, wear the uniform of the gender they identified with, are they going to have access to the public spaces, the female public spaces? You know, if they're wearing a 
a female uniform? Can they now use the bathrooms? Because they're going to be in a very tough spot, you know. They cannot, it's going to be hard for them to use the male bathroom because a lot of the male students there are going to be uncomfortable. On the other hand, the female student will also be uncomfortable. So um, if you make, if you provide a separate restroom or bathroom for them, they might also, a lot of them actually were saying that, well, we don't want to be discriminated. We want to be able to use the public spaces of, you know, the gender we identify with. So it's, it is it is very complicated. A lot of Filipinos agree that this is a line that a lot of Filipinos don't want to cross yet. But I think it's going there. There's just like what's happening here in the, in the U.S. Now, let me summarize this because I'm starting to get really tired now. I can't really, after looking into this, I can't really disagree with the viewer's comment. You know, he made a very good point. And I mean, the country, the Philippines has a lot of traditional values. A lot of Filipinos want to hold on to those values, especially the older generation. But again, that old generation happens to be more conservative they're dying you know that they only account for a very small population of the country you now have a very young population and the young population they are challenging the norm and you know the norms they are challenging those traditional ways of life and sooner or later this is going to change you can already see the trajectory of the country and i've noticed that the less the resistance, the faster that change is. Right now, there's still a lot of resistance because, again, you you still got to remember that the Philippines is a very Catholic country. And other than Catholics, you also have a lot of evangelical churches in the Philippines, and they're very against this change, okay? Now, the old generation will die out, and now you have a new generation, and they will soon become leaders. And when you have that in place, I mean, the country, is, the country will eventually change. And any country who closely follows the culture of the West, that is, you can already see the trajectory of the country, unfortunately. I'm going to end this video here. I hope um, you enjoyed watching the video. If you have any comments you'd like to share, you're more than welcome to do that in the comment section below. I'll see you guys on my next one. Bye.